So the best way to get into data science is through biomedical science. The thoughts expressed in this podcast are my own views. They don't reflect the values of my employers. Welcome back to another episode of the BioLab Collective with Jack Wayne Podcast. My name is Jack. We talk about the business of science and how the latest headlines and job advertisements in science and tech informs us about the careers of the future. Today, we're going to be talking about data science as a career path and how it's actually very difficult to get into data science and be competitive for the roles that are being advertised. There are some very interesting parallels between a certain branch of biomedical science, which I am in, and data science. It's actually a lot easier to get into data science than you would think from parallel disciplines. An alternative pathway, a kind of tangent off the beaten path can actually get you into data science and a more senior role in data science a lot more quickly. This is part of our ongoing Job Hunter series where we explore different types of jobs in science and tech and talk about how we can strategize and plan our careers by looking at what is currently being advertised within the field. And I am a microbiologist, which is a branch of biomedical science. That is a lens through which we'll look at most of these jobs, certainly today, but going forward, there'll be other careers in science and tech that will be interesting to many of you out there, whether you're a fresh new graduate or an earlier mid-career person trying to move or pivot to a slightly different career path. This is the exercise. We use whatever job search website is most popular and common in your country. In Australia, it is seek.com.au. And we type in the keyword data scientist under any classification, any location, any pay bracket. And what comes up is quite a large number of jobs, which is really exciting. This is the reason that data science comes up as a search term on YouTube all the time. There are 2,579 jobs. And we can just quickly look through them. We're not going to go through them one by one. There's a recurring theme I want you to try and pick out. Out. The first job is a digital research analyst based in Murdoch Children's Research Institute. And the requirements are five years of relevant experience, in addition to a degree in a relevant field such as computer science, data science, or related discipline. So you need five years of experience. If you're a fresh graduate, this might disqualify you straight away. The next job, a senior data scientist based in Surtsey. They are a Seek startup and they're trying to create some usable, verifiable data on the labor market. And this senior scientist data role and this senior data scientist role has a number of different responsibilities. But again, if we look at the skills and experience, there is a very long list and you need a PhD qualification or a master's of science qualification in computer science, computational physics, math, statistics, or related field and professional experience in at least one programming language. Again, if you're a fresh graduate, this might feel very intimidating for you to dip into the waters. And the last group that we'll look at is a job based in Shell, Shell Energy. They are looking for a data scientist as well. And again, what are they looking for? A PhD in applied statistics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, or a related quantitative discipline, any demonstrated experience in a data science role, and a whole host of different things, good and the bad. The good is that these are three very different places. One is at a research institute based at a children's hospital. One is a startup that is trying to work with human resources data. Another one is based very firmly in the private sector with Shell Energy. Three very different roles, but all of them require the use of data and the use of data scientists. So if you are interested in this role, then you've got lots of different options. In Australia, currently in January 2024, there are over 2,500 jobs being advertised. Unfortunately, a lot of these roles, as you can tell, are very senior. You need a lot of experience. How do you actually get that experience even if you did actually major or study data science as your degree, as your discipline, how will you get given the access to these big data sets, to these big projects to work on this incredibly detailed and complicated data, which includes machine learning and AI and using statistical models to predict what the future trends of that data is going to be? Because at the end of the day, a data scientist involves working with really high volumes of big data and try to extrapolate trends and use those trends to make predictions about the future. It could be, hey, why is sales going down but going up in a different part of the world? Is this particular marketing strategy very effective? Are we getting return on investment? You're using data to make predictions in any kind of business, any kind of sector has a lot of data. Any kind of business that's looking to improve their profitability will want to get the most out of any existing data they have access to. So data scientists are very much in demand, but 
it seems like all the jobs advertised very, very senior roles with a lot of experience. You cannot be a fresh new graduate. This goes into a whole other area of how anyone, any young professional gets experience and gets work while you're studying your degree in data science for you to start professional networking very early on. Hopefully there are some companies that would sponsor career events through your university or college, or you can reach out and try and do industry internships or placements. Those are probably the most reliable way to build those connections. So when you finish a degree, you've already got maybe two years of experience working in this area. Or if you are trying to change from a different career path and get into data science because you feel like what you studied or what you're working in either isn't that interesting anymore or there's not as many jobs, how do you bridge this gulf that is a five-year experience or lots of projects under your belt before they even will interview you. My audience is predominantly people who are studying biomedical science or have studied biomedical science, graduate, master's or PhD. And I'm here to tell you that you are in with a significant unfair advantage as someone in the field of biomedical science. I'm going to go through two jobs today, both at the same place coincidentally. And these jobs will really reveal just how big an advantage biomedical science and the discipline of biomedical sciences has in this field of data science. If you are a paid Substack subscriber, I will dive deep into the strategy on how to apply for these two specific jobs. These are live job listings as of January 2024, and you will get first dibs on how you would approach this kind of job advertisement and how you would write your job application, how you would potentially interview for this role. So that would be for paid Substack subscribers with early access to the information. But without further ado, let's dive in to see exactly what advantage biomedical science has in the field of data science. I am of course talking about bioinformatics. In the biomedical sciences, we are nothing if not full of data. The human body, diseases, cancer, genetics, a huge black box. The Human Genome Project was supposedly finished in the early 2000s and they basically sequenced one person, one mosaic worth of human genome. But they have no idea what that information actually means. What is happening to every piece of DNA? What is happening to the genes? Are they being turned on and off at different times? Is that different for a person without a specific disease versus someone who is more prone to cancer? How do their genetics vary? If we look across whole populations, what is the likelihood of that gene being found in this specific variant? What are the predispositions to disease, say being infected by a virus? What is the likelihood of that happening? If you've got a certain variation in your DNA, do you have a single nucleotide polymorphism that makes you more prone to something like Alzheimer's? Biomedical science is full of these huge questions. The only way to answer them is to collect an extraordinary amount of data. So if you are working as a bioinformatician, you have huge opportunity to work with enormous data sets that no one has worked with before. And you can leverage that to then branch off into data science. This job is more of an entry level bioinformatician. It is being advertised in the Peter McCallum Cancer Center based in Melbourne, Victoria in Australia. And this is a 12 month position. Most jobs based in research are one to two years to start with the possibility of extension because often the projects funding these positions go for two to three years at most. They're looking for someone either with a PhD or a graduate degree, and they've got experience in bioinformatics, computational biology, systems biology, computer science, or statistics and also a background in cell biology would be appropriate. And they've got very specific technologies they're using, high throughput technologies, single cell RNA sequencing, lineage tracing, long read RNA sequencing, spatial transcriptomics and multiplex immunochemistry. And the bioinformatics officer would need to implement existing available tools as well as develop novel methods, analysis or tools to understand tumor cell biology and the tumor microenvironment. You're all sitting there thinking, Jack, this sounds way more complicated than the other data science roles you read out earlier. And this is supposed to be an entry-level bioinformatics role. How is this a shortcut? Well, first things first, obviously tumor cell microenvironments is a very complicated thing, but we're thinking about your complete holistic package as someone who can be employed. If you trained in bioinformatics and you've got access to programming skills, you can learn a lot about these kinds of environments because many of the tools out there are freely available. You could teach yourself 
the basics to bioinformatics really by doing YouTube and learning a bit of Python programming. These are big freely accessible resources that anyone can tap into and if you can teach yourself a fair amount of it, you could pivot from this bioinformatics role to a data science role and something completely unrelated because this kind of experience is just incomparable. Where else, what kind of company is working with data on the level of DNA, RNA sequencing, lineage tracing with thousands of people in the data set. No other company is working with data that's this deep, this complex. If you're a biomedical scientist thinking about which area to specialize in and you don't actually want to commit to one type of biomedical science for the rest of your life. So if like me, I'm a microbiologist, that is me. But if you didn't know which branch to go into, something like biochemistry or bioinformatics really sets you up to have a very, very transferable skill set because Yes, you work with data science, but you've got a specific application built in, which gives you access to these really complicated data sets that no other company would give an entry level graduate access to. You work, you develop these tools, you not only use the existing tools, you work on programming some new ones. And when you then interview for that other data scientist job, whether it be in bioinformatics or outside of it, you can say, look, I've used and developed tools that no one has developed before, looking at human biological data that no one can even begin to comprehend. It is the modern day black hole. In many ways, it is even more mysterious than outer space. And that's a very compelling pitch, especially if the company you're working for is a startup or if they're not a scientist and they don't know much about biological sciences. Biology is much less predictable. Data science is about extracting existing information, putting it through a model and making reliable predictions. I'll tell you right now, none of the models out there can that accurately predict biological behavior or biological outputs at the cellular level. We've tried, maybe with AI coming in, it will be able to do it more predictably, more reliably, more efficiently, but to date, all of the bioinformatics that I've worked with myself, as well as the very brilliant bioinformaticians that we work with, we can make predictions within a certain realm of influence, but going out of our way to make these really, really big predictions, one person's DNA can be 0.1% different from another person's DNA, but we are just very, very different people, both in our physical nature, as well as in our cognitive brain functionality. It is a blessing and a curse. Biology is very varied and if you are a data scientist, if you're a bioinformatician working with biological data over a number of years, you can do so right from graduating. You can just specialize in bioinformatics, work on a bioinformatics research project within any area of biomedical science. And that gives you tremendous mystery about exactly what kind of data you're working with and the power of the analysis you've had to devise. This is an entry level role. And as I said, most of these people have a lot of experience building that pathway in your career of an application of data science that is on a big data set that I think is really powerful, especially when all these jobs being advertised are very, very senior. By the same token, if you are not someone studying anything related to biology or biomedical science, and you're a pure computational science major, really consider in one of of your summer projects, your research projects, having an element of biological data into it. Certainly behavioral data would be easy to get access to. There's a lot of click stream data. Every website, every business that has an online portal has some kind of dashboard would be drowning in that kind of interaction and click stream data. So you could get access to that information. But if there's any chance to do some kind of internship at big pharma company or a research lab discovering new drugs, you would be amazed at the kind of data and the complexity involved to make even the most basic predictions. The next job, and this is completely a coincidence, is at exactly the same place, which is also at Peter McCallum Cancer Center, but this time it's for a senior bioinformatician. What is the difference between a bioinformatician and a senior bioinformatician, certainly at this institute? Well, first of all, the senior bioinformatician, they have a fixed term contract for two years with a prospect for a permanent position. So their additional qualifications and additional experience presumably gives them more leverage to negotiate for a longer period of employment, which is, which is really great. And they are now not just using existing tools. There's an expectation that they're designing and leading the invention and innovative exploration of brand new tools that no one has ever devised before. Whereas for a bioinformatician, 
fresh out of a graduate degree, 50-50, use the existing tools versus develop some new tools yourself. If you're a senior biophotician, you're expected to invent the wheel again and again. This role is looking at functional genomics and molecular genomics, which again is an enormous data set with no obvious rules. It is like a playground where no one knows what the rules are, but everyone is constantly being punished for violating these rules. It is very opaque exactly what you're looking for. And if you can wrangle this data set in any meaningful way, at the very least, you're making a significant contribution to the field of molecular research. And secondly, it's really impressive on your CV when you're applying for the next job, whether it be in bioinformatics or a data science role outside of bioinformatics. You are optimizing analysis methodologies and bioinformatics operational development to streamline service deliveries. So again, this is more to do with developing new tools than using existing tools. You have to take charge with autonomy and leadership to create these new tools yourself that are very boutique and tailored and optimized for this group's research, which is not an easy thing to do. Every research group has a different amount of data and different volume of data that they're working with. Tweaking it so that it's perfectly fine-tuned to what they're looking at is not a simple task and that's reflected in what are the essential requirements that they're looking for. Now this time PhD is uh, a minimum. You need an appropriate area study with a PhD. Totally fine for you to be in computer science or software engineering. So if you don't have any biomedical science training, this is still appropriate. In my experience, it's very difficult to win over the people working in the lab as a bioinformatician. If you don't know a little bit about what it takes to do the experiment or how many replicates is easy to get or how flawed the data collection process is, how much error is baked into each part of the process. So I really encourage if you are a computer science or software engineering graduate that you do some kind of subject or course or unit that will let you experience hands-on lab work. This gives you better insight into what the scientists are struggling with in a biology lab. Minimum five-year relevant working experience and they're specifically looking for next generation sequencing data for human disease research. And on top of that, they want a strong academic track record, publications and grant applications. They're looking for programming and data analysis skills in R and Python, Unix environment, shell scripting, everything else is general transferable skills. Image analysis, data integration across omics and imaging data, specific pipelines, specific frameworks, high performance computing, whole genome, whole exome sequencing. This is a much more specific and niche application of the role of a bioinformatician. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend a senior bioinformatician role for anyone, especially for those of you who aren't very committed to a path in academia. You want to go work in a private sector a little bit more if you're already very entrenched in bioinformatics, you can actually move to the private sector very easily. But if you weren't sure about the best way of breaking into data science or what is the project that is most intellectually stimulating to you to analyze in data science, then something like this, something like bioinformatician, you'll be working on a data set and a project that is very unique, that is unparalleled in terms of its complexity and also has a big black box as to where it's going next. This is very fulfilling intellectually, you're doing something very important. And also, by the way, it has tremendous transferability into other areas, into other industries. People at Shell would be very, very keen to hire someone who has looked at these amazingly complex data sets, sales figures, it's volumes of units moved. It is projections of hiring costs over time. These are figures people have studied before. They know what to do with them. But looking at biological data, looking at human genome sequencing data, that is uncharted waters. And that is really, really exciting both to you and for the mystery it creates around you for potential employers. For those of you who are paid Substack subscribers, in the next Job Hunter posts, I'm going to go through my strategy for applying for these two specific roles, a bioinformatician and a senior bioinformatician, as well as some resources you could use if you feel like you want to brush up on some area of bioinformatics or see if bioinformatics is even something you're interested in to explore as a career path. Hope you're all having a great start to 2024. I'm Jack. Hope to connect with you again in the next episode.